bring in Kevin Hanks and Renita Young. Really the only downside movers in the market today are those that got booted from the NASDAQ 100 for other reasons, Renita. So this might have flown a little bit under the radar today, but Enphase Energy and Lucid are being removed from the NASDAQ 100 on December 18th when the index does its annual rebalancing. And for Lucid, shares are down today, and they're down around 49% over the past 12 months. This stock has been having a hard time, not just in the charts, but the company's been having a hard time finding its place in the luxury EV market. Deliveries are down about 30% from the peak in 2024, or pardon me, in the fourth quarter of 2022, and production's also down from its peak in the fourth quarter of 2022. And the company cut its annual production target by 50%. And to add insult to injury, Lucid's losses are piling up. Mm. Now let's switch over to Enphase Energy. It's down around 69% over the past 12 months. And despite several clean energy initiatives, many that we saw coming at the end of last year and the beginning of this one, the solar industry on a whole has collapsed in 2023. And Enphase Energy in particular saw third quarter revenue fall about 13%. And then this was the kicker. They issued a disastrous guidance that was well below analyst expectations. Now, now, those aren't the only stocks that are being booted out of the NASDAQ 100. They're also booting out Zoom Video, eBay, JD.com, and Align Technology. And all of these stocks have been falling on the day. So we'll see them out of the index on December 18th before markets open. But a few will be added to the NASDAQ 100. We have DoorDash, MongoDB, Splunk, CDW, and then Roper Technologies, also Coca-Cola Euro Pacific Partners. But it might be a short ride for Splunk since it will be acquired yeah, be by acquired. Cisco, which is in the NASDAQ. Yeah. Oh, pardon me, not the NASDAQ, the Dow. Right. Well, uh, yeah, we get a nice little um, evolution of uh, mm -hmm. you know, the process, and we see the uh, mathematical commitment of the index committee to bring in companies that are on their way to get acquired. Never know what could happen. Right. And uh, we see further literal separation of wheat from chaff uh, over this past earnings season. Sounds like a lot of tech companies and cloud stocks are going to be filling in the gaps left by these companies. I mean, other than that, Kev, it's pretty green today. Uh, utilities and energy down, every other sector up. ETFs that I track, factor funds, one value fund marginally down, everything else higher. Yes, Oliver, it's a, another solid day for the market as, like I said, this number, this CPI number that was such a big number, had some volatility below the surface, but the aggregate number was pretty calm, pretty tame. Now. Here's one, I, I'm not comfortable, Oliver, in the role of a cynic, but here's <laughs> something that a little cautionary tale for the markets. Three of the four indices are now overbought on the upside. So you want to be careful about the Dow, which is almost an 80 on the RSI, the SPX, which is about a 72, and the NASDAQ, which is right at 70. It's only the Russell that's trading about a 67 on the RSI. So what that means, the market can absolutely go higher while they're overbought, but they get a little more sensitive to any news that might disappoint the market. So watch there. If you look at the charts on those three names, they've had nice runs up until now, Oliver, but they're going to need good news going forward. And Jerome Powell, who has a history of delivering news to the markets that they like, needs to do it again tomorrow for these markets to stay up here. Okay. Big by the dip. That's the thing is that it wasn't like they didn't try to hit him this morning. They hit him pretty good on the intraday, including the Russell down a percent. Uh, you know, it, it was like, what, one and a half percentage point uh, fade from the intraday high. So it's a pretty good comeback. It's almost we're almost nearing like a two percent swing uh, positive for the Russell. Listen, I think the Russell is one of those names. It's such a big sample size. It's such a. A, a domestic based group that it's really an, an an indication of the overall health of the US economy. So we look at you know the dollar and international markets when we look at the S&P and so many of these companies are multinationals. 27 of the Dow 30 stocks are US multinationals, but the Russell that is purely 
almost purely a domestic uh, indices. So yeah, and, and of course, as you know, it's the largest sample size of the four indices. So when you look at that, certainly an idea of overall market health is the Russell 2000, Oliver. Okay. All right. Yeah. And uh, when we get that participation, certainly is uh, some of the best trading to the upside we get. Thanks, Kevin Hanks, Renita Young, for the look here at the contour of the market rally today.